I have an idea. If I took a plasma cutter and a rotor and strapped them both onto a CNC, would you have a CNC plasma rotor? And as an inexperienced, naive, not too mechanically inclined CNCist, I thought it'd be easy. So that's exactly what we're gonna build in this video. I know something like this already exists, so I know it's possible, which is why I wanna build it even more. It's gonna be very complicated. I'm gonna have a lot of screw ups, but I'm hoping the reward will be worth it. So I got started and the first thing I did was figure out what I was going to do. And right off the bat, the first step I made was a mistake. See, I thought it'd be a really good idea to use a plasma cutting table as my base. I already had one from my previous CNC plasma cutter. However, what I didn't find out until starting the project is that this thing was incredibly unsquare, unlevel, just not very sturdy to begin with. But after about a day or two of non-stop trying and crying, I was able to get this thing fully square and level and welded it all up so it was nice and strong. So first step out of the way, bit of an issue right out the gate, but hey, we figured it out. From here, I started building the actual machine. And to do this, I decided to use aluminum extrusion. That working with this stuff is pretty simple because all you have to do is get there albeit very expensive accessories, and you can clamp all the metal together. Like seriously, how is it a tiny little bracket like this can cost anywhere from 10 to $15? Especially considering you could build these super cheap if you just had a CNC plasma cutter. Anyway, I then checked if it was level, and I was happy with where it was at, though I did end up having to mess with this many times throughout this project, it sucked. Working on the x-axis now, I put on two linear guides, which are the exact same ones I used for my back scratching bed video. Now for the plate that's going to hold the two heads, I decided to cut it out of a piece of aluminum. This was a mistake. Let me just say, I ended up going through like four or five revisions changing this thing. It was just way too weak. Which I know I've said it already, but man, the amount of times that a CNC plasma cutter would come in handy for building a CNC plasma cutter. Like it's unbelievable. Okay, so this is what we got so far. I've got this axis able to move very smoothly and I've got this axis able to move a little bit more noisily, but also smoothly. Then through here, we're gonna have um, the ball screw shaft that'll basically go through and um, move this back and forth. So I can just uh, move it around. hold all the electronics, I got this military ammo box thing and modified it. It is a little on the small side, but I kind of like that compactness about it. Until I started using it and then I realized it's kind of on the small side and this compactness about it makes it very difficult. So I ended up getting a bigger one and swapping everything around and spending double the money. So you remember how I said I made like four or five different heads for this thing? Well, we're gonna speed run through those really quick. So the first one was a thin aluminum plate which we originally put on which was just way too thin and flimsy. So then we upgraded that to a quarter inch thick aluminum plate which was good and sturdy but then we needed to add to that. So then I installed two pieces of, of extrusion, one for the torch, one for the router. Unfortunately the one for the router was too flimsy so I had to remove that. Then I replaced that with a new form of z-axis which was also too wobbly so then I had to take that off. So I finally just said screw it and built this very large and robust Z-axis using linear guides and it works good. Speaking of Z-axis, let me show you guys how I'm planning on controlling these, since there are two actual heads. So these are actually being controlled from the same controller, but the signal will be swapped between them using this relay board. So when I flick the switch one way, it controls the plasma cutter head. When I flick it the other way, it changes the signals over and controls the relay head. I'm sure there's going to be some smarter person than me who says why this is a bad idea, but all I can say is at least it works, and if something goes wrong with it, that's future me's problem. Now, for all the software I'm using for this, I decided to choose the stuff that's all free. This project was pretty expensive, so sticking to the free stuff seemed to be the best idea. So things like Fusion 360 is great because you can design your part and create G-code for both plasma cutting, routering, and a bunch of other stuff, actually, which is all pretty sweet. Then to actually control the machine, I used Mot3, because if you use the demo, it's free. I guess you could say it's 
mock free. With that out of the way, let's do our first test. I'm going to start with the plasma cutter since that's kind of what I was more interested in in this build. Now I did a whole bunch of dry runs, so the movement was working fine, but I had no idea about the actual plasma cutting portion. Okay, I'm terrified. I'm terrified. Just to be clear, I'm terrified that it won't work. I'm not, I'm not scared of the plasma. That's, <laughs> I'm not a baby. Starting test in three, two, one. Though if I was a baby, this part would have made me shed a tear of joy. And I spoke too soon. So as you can see from the result, it didn't work out very well. Um, I was expecting that. Uh, that's obvious. I hadn't tinkered with the settings at all. What I wasn't expecting though is it disconnected from the computer and then completely just stood still and started just spraying plasma at the metal, creating this little hole here. I don't know why that happened, but I'm just going to have to, I guess, ground the shit out of this thing and hopefully it fixes it. As it turns out, that was the issue and it did fix it. So now we can actually see what this was supposed to look like. It does sit here and spray for a little bit. This wasn't because of the grounding issue. This was because I essentially told it to in the code without me realizing. Whoops. All right, with this thing pretty much working, let's finally cut something. Yes, I know, I'm quite romantic. All right, with the plasma portion done, let's get started on the other half, the router portion. I wonder if this will just work first try. So essentially what happened is this piece in the back here that holds the entire weight of the head broke. And as you can see here, I was an idiot and I printed it with only like 20% infill, which for a part that's holding the entire head, all the vibrations, and it's a very crucial part. Yeah, I don't know what I was thinking. I, I really don't. So I reprinted this in a completely different material. So carbon fiber this time and 100% infill. So this thing shouldn't break. It should be strong enough. Then after a few hours of taking everything apart and replacing it, now we're able to try the test. All right, let's test it. POV, my face when the machine actually works. <laughs> that wasn't funny. So I don't actually have any more tests with this. It's a bit of a funny story. And so uh, I was loading the wood into the machine and while doing so, I hit the bit while it was in the router and I may have possibly broke it. And by may have, I mean, I did. She's fucking broken. She is gone. I split her in half. Yeah. And unfortunately, it's the only router bit I have. I'm waiting for more to come, but there's still going to be a while. And I figured, hey, it does work, so I might as well show the video. But if you consider this, anyone who wants to see the machine work, you should subscribe. Because obviously I'm going to use this tool in a future video for a future project. So think of it as a future investment in yourself. So subscribe.